The audience comes last. We need to make art for ourselves. For the last few months, we've been testing Rick Rubin's music process, and the results have been shocking. We run a production school with 800 producers. So we thought, let's do a bit of a case study. If you don't know, Rick Rubin has been promoting his new book and has been giving interviews and going on podcasts. He's been getting a lot of press recently, and he's one of the most influential producers from the 80s, 90s, and early 2000s. He's produced for Beastie Boys, uh, Red Hot Chili Peppers, System of a Down, tons of artists who I personally love. Like he's literally produced some of my favorite albums. So I'm a massive Rick Rubin fan. He had a clip that went viral earlier this year. You might have seen it. He talks about he doesn't actually make any music. You know, he can't work a production board. He doesn't have any musical background. But his strength in production comes from what he likes. He has a very strong feeling about what he likes, which he deserves, I suppose. He's had a lot of hits, some massive albums. But then he continues to say in a lot of these interviews, the music making process should not be for the audience. He explains that making music is just for the artist. The artist comes first, and then the audience and everyone else comes last. He explains that this is true art. You're doing it for you, and that's art. If you're making music while considering the audience or the fans or others, then that's not art, that's commerce. So let's actually watch one of those clips. Something I say in the book is that the audience comes last. And I believe that. I'm not making it for them. I'm making it for me. So much of why, if you go to the movies, so many big movies just not good. It's because they're, they're not being made by a person who cares about it. They're being made by people who are trying to make something that they think someone else is going to like. Mm. And that's not how art works. Art doesn't, that's something else. It's not art. That's commerce. Okay. So let's break this down. The audience comes last and we need to make art for ourselves. And most importantly, and he says at the end, it's not commerce. So we took this concept and we presented it to a group of our students, uh, producers from our school. And I want to clarify something. Our students at Cosmic Academy, they're not just beginners. We have students who signed to the biggest labels. They signed to Defected and Juna, Tool Room, Monster Cat. They play EDC, they play Ultra, they play Tomorrowland. So it's not like we just grabbed a group of amateur producers and said, try this approach. No, we, we, we took a group and we showed them Rick Rubin's approach. And initially, they loved the idea. They said, this is great. I'm just going to make stuff only for me. Don't think about anybody else. Not the fans, not the labels. Don't think about the promoters. Don't think about the people who book the gigs. Just focus on you. As Rick Rubin says, you come first, they come last. So here's what happened. A few months go by and these producers of ours, they really like the stuff that they're making. They come to me and they say, Justin, I love this stuff but I actually want to send it out. I did remind them they made this for themselves, not for others. Yet, they shared it anyway, and they got zero results. And these are producers who typically sign stuff to great labels and get a lot of plays, and they weren't getting any of that. Labels were rejecting them, other artists weren't supporting these songs, and they weren't getting any plays. And of course, these tracks didn't do well, so they definitely weren't getting any gigs through it. But I reminded them, as Rick Rubin says, this is art, not commerce. And then they came back to me and they said something to the effect of, well, Justin, I spent hours and hours and weeks working on this music and I get nothing out of it. I reminded them again, it's art just for you. And one of my producer students said to me, but Justin, I do want the fans in the audience to enjoy it. Another said, I do want these outside labels to like it. And finally, another one came to me and said, Justin, I have to pay rent. Okay, so let's discuss. I think it's a beautiful thing to want to do this just for the art. And if you're here for that, then that is fantastic and incredible. But my students that come to Cosmic Academy, they are doing this to get some sort of external result, whether it's gigs, records signed, you know, Spotify plays. They want to see some sort of result 
for this hard work they're putting in. So I suppose there's a bit of commerce, as Rick Rubin would call it. And our school actually focuses on getting these results. Signing records, playing shows, getting harder support. And when you're trying to sign a track to a specific label that wants a specific sound, you might have to consider that if you want to be on that label or when you want to play a certain show or at a certain venue or a certain festival. Those shows and venues and festivals only book certain sounds. You know, our student, Bexie, just got off a 25 show tour. She toured with Seven Lions and she got on that tour because she makes what the fans like. Our student, Nostalgics, she just played Red Rocks for Deadbeats. Why? Because she makes music that the Deadbeats fans like. So you'll have to consider this. I think what it all comes down to is what do you want out of this? If you want to sign records, play shows, get streams, Rick's advice might not be so good for you. But if you are trying to do those things, then you can apply to a program like ours. We've been around for 12 years now, and we focus specifically on getting those results. I'll leave a link below in the comments if you want to apply. Now, if you don't care about those results and you want to just have fun making the music or get some sort of personal gratification, then I think Rick is spot on. It's also important to remember this. Rick was doing this at a high level decades ago, but this interview we watched is from 2023. Rick is now worth something like $300 million in 2023. So he doesn't actually really need to think about the commerce anymore. Now, I don't know what he would have said to this in maybe 1985, or what would he be saying if he was starting out fresh today as a producer? You know, most producers do need to pay the bills. Also, I don't know if you could be a producer like Rick Rubin today in 2023. As he says, he doesn't have any technical abilities, Let's be clear on what kind of producer he is. Do you play instruments? Barely. Do you know how to work a soundboard? No, I have no technical ability. And I know nothing about music. <laughs> you must know something. Well, I know what I like and what I don't like. And I'm decisive about what I like and what I don't like. So what are you being paid for? The confidence that I have in my taste and my ability to express what I feel has proven helpful for artists. So he tells people what he likes and directs them on what to do. Like I said, maybe that was a thing in the 80s and the 90s, but when you're starting out today, you need to learn the production software. You need to learn how to make the music. You need to learn how to engineer, how to mix, some sound design. I don't think this path is a great path to emulate for producers right now. You know, good luck just walking into a studio and telling people who have some experience, do this and do that. And somehow they listen to you and you end up with a hit record. I think we need to realize we are not Rick Rubin. My students are also not Rick Rubin. He had a very unique path. His path will likely not be your path. When I look at my 800 students, none of them have done it the way that Rick Rubin did it. And still, my students get pretty good results. So I think these interviews with these legendary producers are amazing, they're really cool. They give you something to think about. But are they practical for the average producer? Maybe not. Remember, your path is your own. Don't compare your step one to Rick Rubin's step 10. It's completely different. Now, if you do care about the commerce, about the results, about the plays, the audience side of things, and you are trying to get more fans to listen to your stuff, I have an entire video just on that. I'm gonna put that up next and we'll see you in there.